Hello and welcome to today's Almost Daily Devotion. We are in Philemon. We're going to read, um, starting with the eighth verse, and it goes like this. Therefore, though I have enough confidence in Christ to command you to do the right thing, I would rather appeal to you through love. I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, appeal to you for my child Onesimus. I became his father in the faith during my time in prison. He was useless to you before, but now he is useful to both of us. I'm sending him back to you, which is like sending you my own heart. I considered keeping him with me so that he might serve me in your place during my time in prison. However, I didn't want to do anything without your consent, so that your act of kindness would occur willingly and not under pressure. Maybe this is the reason that Onesimus was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave. That is, as a dearly loved brother. So a couple things off the bat. Onesimus is Philemon's slave. At least that's how we read this story. And that can make it really hard for us modern readers to hear the value of it. Because it seems to us that Paul is endorsing slavery. That Paul is saying it's okay that Philemon held Onesimus um, captive and didn't pay him for his work. And some of the, so we have to deal with that. We have to acknowledge that. We have to, uh, in some way, say how we're going to interpret this story. Because everything, all things can be interpreted, can be given for good. And so how do we interpret a story that so radically offends us? And I think one way we do that is we acknowledge that today is not then. Slavery was a horrific, it is a horrific institution, but it was also incredibly common. It was something like, and don't quote me on this, a fifth of all people in the Roman world were slaves. And so it wasn't something that they they understood in the same way that we did. Um, it didn't deny their humanity. They didn't treat them. Well, some of them did. I don't know. I'm not an expert on, on Roman slavery, but um, it was difficult. It was definitely a challenging relationship. It was definitely owner-slave. And so when Paul sends Onesimus back to Philemon, he does it in a particular way. He doesn't say, I'm sending Onesimus back to continue to be your slave. In fact, he goes out of his way to say, I'm sending Onesimus back so that you will treat him like a brother in the faith. And so in that way, we can understand it that Paul is upending the idea of what their relationship should look like, what Philemon and Onesimus' relationship should be now that they are brothers in Christ. And I think that means that we need to acknowledge that there are relationships in our lives that need a similar transformation. That there are people in our world, that there are people whom we interact with on a regular basis, who are in need, that we are in need of transforming our relationship with them. And that's really difficult to do if one half of them are not interested in that. But we can change how we interact with them. We can remove ourselves from the cycle that continues to perpetuate this difficult, challenging, broken relationship. And all of that is intentional. All of that is on purpose. It's not something that's going to happen if you react, if you just continue the relationship and the pattern that you've always had it. And so the question is, how do we live into an intentionally transformed relationship based in our equality in Christ? If we are both brothers and sisters in Christ, We are all part of the family of God, and that means that we have to treat each other differently. And the other person may not understand that in the same way that you do. But as my mother always said, you can only control you. You can only control you and how you interact with that other person. And so they may never change. They may never be different, but you can control you. So you can bring your peace 
you can bring your contentment, you can bring your integrity into that situation. Paul is honest with Philemon and says, this is my heart I'm sending back to you. And I ask you to honor it and respect it and treat it in the way that you would treat me. And so we can live into hurt and we can live into that relationship that continues to bring pain. And we can continue to react in the same way we always have. Or we can acknowledge that some relationships need to be changed. And we can live into that intentionality. We can ask ourselves, does this tension, does this difficulty require some God, require some God, some God attention, some intentional time praying and wondering and sitting into that tension? What relationships do you need to change? Not what people, what relationship? And how can you see them as gods? God bless.